All right. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Doing awesome? Are the like first two rows up here like off limits or something? You remind me of the good Baptist people, the, you know, churchgoers on the back row. Um, I guess I'll just talk to you guys away. They're like so, so strange. Um, so hi, good morning. I'm really glad to, hear, to be here today. I just literally landed yesterday after a week and a half in California, spending about a week, let's see, I was there for 10 days, spending some amazing time with some amazing leaders. And I'm coming back here to, with an assignment from Danny slash Jesus um, to talk about something that I really just had such a great uh I just think real practical example of over the last 10 days. And so my assignment today is to talk to you about honor and the power of honor in our lives, the power of honor in uh, the body of Christ when it's an operation, how honor spreads the fragrance of Jesus Christ how honor is a core value of the kingdom, how honor is God. God is honor. You know why? Because God is love. And you cannot separate love from honor. And so I'm going to pray here just for a moment, and I just want to honor the presence of God. You know, the presence of God is the greatest gift that we have ever been given. And I want you just to sit with that for a moment. God honors us with his presence. Just sit with that for just a second. That the presence of God dwells within us. That God has made us his home. Jesus is inside each of us right now. We are seated in heavenly places at the seat of highest honor. God honors us, you guys, so much that he sat us in heavenly places in the highest seat of honor inside of Christ at the right hand of the Father. And Jesus and the Father are one. How much honor could he give us? Wow, is that incredible? The honor that God has for us to make us one with him, not based on anything other than the fact that he loves us. He loves us. And so therefore he honors us. Man, that is an incredible message, an incredible message. And we just honor your presence here, Father, today. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it lightly. It is your presence that distinguishes us, that, that, that refreshes us, that fills us, that makes us alive, that heals us, that transforms us, that made us new, that teaches us. It's, it's your spirit. It's your presence. It's your revelation, Holy Spirit. It's your wisdom, Holy Spirit. You honor us with yourself. And we just honor you by just acknowledging it right now. And so God, teach us today, Holy Spirit, teach us how to honor, how to honor your presence, how to honor ourselves, how to honor one another, how to honor those that don't know you, how to honor the least, how to honor people, God, the way that you honor people. Help us to receive people, receive the gift of people through your honor, through the way that you see them, Father. Change the way that we think today. Renew our minds. Transfigure us. Transform us by changing the way we think today. In Jesus' name, amen. I've got a lot of ground to cover, and I I really felt like I wanted to make this connection before we did anything about honor. And I wanted to make this connection between love and honor. And I wanted to start with that because the greatest in the kingdom is a servant. And that's the greatest honor. The greatest honor is service. The greatest honor is love. Love, I wrote a a, a love note from dad this week. If you aren't on my love notes from dad, go to shalice.com and subscribe to my email list. 
But I wrote a love note from dad this week, and the, and the title of it is Love is Why. Love is Why. Love is God's Why. <laughs> it's who he is. It's his purpose. And it's why we exist. It's why everything that he created exists. And love, I just want you to just try this on for a second, that love flows through honor. You know, I have been a student of honor, um, specifically of the word honor, probably for about maybe 11 years. Because for me, when I first heard the word, I, it was like a, an elusive word. You know, I thought of, you know, honor your mother and father. You know, that's a scripture we kind of all know, which growing up, that just meant obey them. I mean, that to me, that's what I thought. Honor just looked like obedience. Just obey your parents. And then that's what it means to honor them. But what does that look like when you grow up and you get out of the house? <laughs> because obedience to your parents when you get out of the house isn't necessarily always a great thing, right? You've got to grow into your own um, identity and you've got to have your own family and your own boundaries and your own values and your own obedience to the Lord. You know, so it's, it's honor is not really about necessarily obedience, all right? It's about recognizing who someone is. Okay, it's about recogni recognizing who someone is. And if you really want to get a grasp on that, I have to preach the gospel to you for just a second. And I want to take you, I'm going to take you first of all in the mirror translation because it's just so good. But we may go a couple of other places in uh, another other, couple of other translations. But let me pull it up. I can. My phone is acting crazy. Okay, it's sideways. Try it again. Okay, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. It says, The love of Christ constrains us and resonates within us. Man, that's powerful. The frequency of love is resonating within us because Jesus Christ is within us leaving us with only one conclusion. When Jesus died, every individual simultaneously died. In God's logic, one has died for all, thus all have died. Okay, let me just go over to this in a different translation. Okay, this is the NIV. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Okay, I'm just going to keep reading the NIV for a moment. It says, and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Verse 16, so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. So let me just read it in one more translation. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version, just to get the thuses out of there and the shalls. It says... For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. Say that with me. I no longer live for myself. Listen, but for him who died for them and rose again. And who is them? Who? Okay, I live, I no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for them, right? For them. Who did, who did Jesus die for? Everybody. So who's them? Everybody. It's everybody, right? But for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one, say no one, no one. According, to the flesh. according to the flesh. 
even though we have known, you can just stop there. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. So I want to, I just want to talk about honor in the context of love for a moment. Because here's the truth, guys. The greatest need in our lives and in every human being on the planet's life is to be loved. And if we are going to break out what it means to be loved, it means to be known and accepted and seen and heard and safe. Are those some things that you think about when you think about what love feels like, what love is like? And every single human being on the planet is worthy of that. It's wor- they are worthy of that because God decided they were. And he decided that they were worthy of it by paying the ultimate price. And the ultimate price was becoming one of us, dying as us, and reconciling us to him. Now, there are some of us that know it, some of us that don't, but the point is love is why. Love is why. And guess what the church's mission is? It's love. Wow. And you know what that means? It means that we get to major on it first. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we all know that one. We we heard it at a wedding one time, (laughs) right? But if you go into 1 Corinthians 14, it says, make love your aim. Make love your aim. Love is why. Love is why. Love is God's why. Love is why he does everything that he does. It is his purpose. It is his identity. It is love. The kingdom of God is the realm of love. And I have to start with this as a foundation because if you're going to grasp honor, you have to recognize that it is compelled by love. (laughs) Honor is the expression, the ultimate expression of love. Okay? And honor sees people differently Love sees people differently than a lens of judgment, a lens through that is a fallen, distorted lens of the five physical senses. Honor sees every human being as worth the blood of God. That is the value of it. Now, I'm going to just back this up with some scriptures because Jesus says some pretty controversial things, I feel like. I'm going to read in Matthew. I've got to go here before we talk about how we honor one another and how we receive one another. Because if we don't have a foundation of what honor really is from a perspective of love, from a perspective of service, from a perspective of laying down our lives for other people, even people that are unworthy of it, from our human judgment, moral, self-righteous standard, we will miss it. And we will be a clanging symbol in the world. And people will run from church rather than to church. And when that happens, I can guarantee you that Jesus has left the building. Because sinners love to hang with Jesus. Pharisees, not so much. So in Matthew 25, 31, it says this, when the son of man appears in his majestic glory with all of his angels, he will take his seat on his throne of splendor and all the nations will be gathered together before him. And like a shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats, he will separate all of the people, the sheep he'll put on his right side and the goats on his left. Then the king will turn to those on his right and say, you have a special place in my father's heart. 
come and experience the full inheritance of the kingdom realm that has been destined to you before the foundation of the world. Now, I'm not going to go deep into this, but I want you to consider that this is not a prophecy about the future. I want you to consider that this is where we are now because we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. Okay? Just want you to consider that for just a moment. Because experiencing the full inheritance of the kingdom realm is a possibility right now. And it is for that purpose that the five-fold ministry has been established. It is so that we will experience the full inheritance of the kingdom on earth. Okay? Now, let me just keep going here. Just, just, just another, another lens to view it through. Okay, just, a, just, a, just because there's revelation to gain when you do that. In verse 35, he says, For when you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you found me thirsty, you gave me drink. When I had no place to stay, you invited me in. And when I was poorly clothed, you covered me. When I was sick, you tenderly cared for me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. And then the godly will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or give you food or something to drink? When did we see you with no place to stay and invite you in? When did we see you poorly clothed and cover you? When did we see you sick and tenderly care for you or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, don't you know, when you cared for one of the least of these, my little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you demonstrated love for me. And other translations, it says what you've done to them, you've done to me. And my point here is that Jesus identifies himself with these kind of people. And beloved, these kinds of people are who we are called to demonstrate Jesus to. And I have to say this because if we miss the purpose of the church, we'll miss the purpose of the fivefold ministry. If you forget that the foundation is Jesus, in other words, that the foundation is love, you will somehow think that these are like job titles and somehow possibly even get something from having one of them, <laughs> like some self-esteem or some identity or something rather than reckon, recognizing that they, are, they only exist to empower the church to love the world. And if we are going to love the world, we sure as heck better figure out how to love each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Right? So, Let's go back to honor because honor is a powerful transformational force. Honor transforms people's lives. It absolutely transforms someone's life. I, I actually took some time this morning um, just to do a little bit of study around the Marines Marines. Why? Why the Marines, Shalise? Because they are infused with a core value of honor. And let me tell you this, they, aren't, they don't all start that way. They don't come into the Marine Corps a Marine. They are shaped and molded and fashioned into a soldier that operates in the core values of the Marine Corps. And there's three core values for Marines, okay? Honor, courage, and commitment. And I wanna say that those three words are also expressions of love. So let me just read this a little bit. It says, I'm just gonna read this is from the website, but I just wanna read it. It says, to understand um, how to do what is right, recruits and Marines are taught about ethics and the core values of the Marine Corps. The Corps' the corps core values are honor, honor, courage, and commitment. These are what make up the bedrock of a Marine's character. 
During recruit training, recruits are taught these core values and numerous others related to them, such as integrity, discipline, teamwork, duty, and esprit de corps. Now, esprit de corps means a feeling of pride, fellowship, and common loyalty shared by the members of a particular group. So honor, it says at the base of a Marine's character is the quality that empowers Marines to exemplify the ultimate in ethical and moral behavior. It is to never lie, cheat, steal. It is to abide in an uncompromising code of integrity. Listen to this. To respect human dignity and to have respect and concern for one another. It represents the maturity, dedication, trust, and dependability that committed that, that commit Marines to act responsible, to be accountable for their actions, to fulfill their obligations, and hold others accountable for their actions. Is that not a, that's a beautiful thing? And beloved, I want to say that if we I, I also encourage you just to begin to study honor. Study honor because it is also a core value of the kingdom. You know, there's a couple of core values that we want to really, I feel, in this transition, that God is really inviting us to embody at family life. You know, I was thinking about family life, the name family life. Well, you know, we could call that love life. Because family is the ultimate expression of love. From God's perspective, it's why family exists. You know, you could also call it, because family is a core value of the kingdom, you could call it kingdom life. You could call it love life. You could call it kingdom life. But it's, it's, it's all embodied in this idea of family life. And there is a standard for family in the kingdom. In fact, it's so beautiful. It's exemplified in the Trinity. And it's so beautiful that it should be, and, and it, is, it is attractive. It is attractive to those in need of family. It's a restorative place. It's a safe place. It's a healing place. And I want to say it's a place of honor. It's a place where you are seen for who you are. It's a place where you are accepted for who you are, even when you're not acting like it. In fact, Especially when, especially when you're not acting like it. And I just have to say that the human race is God's family. They're all his idea. Whether they're orphaned right now or they're enjoying daddy's house. Okay. So when you are part of Daddy's family. You are seen. You are seen. God sees every human being, not how they're acting. In fact, in spite of how they're acting, he sees them. And what the core value of honor here needs to look like, number one, is that we see you. And that's the purpose for the test. Put that, put that little screen up that had the five gifts up there a moment ago. The test is all about, we want to see you. We want to see you. Who are you? Are you operating in some apostolic grace? Do you have some teacher grace, some evangelist grace, some prophet grace, some pastor grace? What kind of, who, what, what, what's in you? What, what, what anointings are on your life? What grace? Grace is a gift, you guys. What, what charisma, what charismatic gifts are operating in you? 
And I don't want you to get confused that this means that you are called to full-time ministry. Okay, in fact, I wanted to do a little survey today. Who is, now the church has weird language for this, and I'm going to use church language because we've been indoctrinated in it, in most of us, but it is not kingdom language, but I'm going to still use it because that's how we talk. So who is called to the marketplace? Raise your hand if you are called to the marketplace, meaning you are not called in, you know, necessarily into full-time ministry. Raise your hand so I can see you guys, okay? So this looks like, what, have working for a, a, a corporation sometimes. It looks like being an entrepreneur, right? Maybe you're called in, we would call the marketplace anywhere outside the, the four walls of the church is how, how we've defined it, okay? But I just want to propose for you that just because you are in quote-unquote marketplace doesn't mean that you are not operating in these graces, Okay, I read a, a, a book years ago called God Out of the Box, and it was a really great book because it talked, I forgot the guy's name, you might know it, Pastor, I don't know, but he, uh, he came to Living Word a couple times, but he was a very powerful pastor of a bank. He was pastoring at a bank. What? Pastoring at a bank? Yeah. Yeah. He was just pastoring those, those employees, pastoring his clients, pastoring his community, being a safe place, helping people grow in their character, grow into their full potential, believing in people, making it a safe and enjoyable and, and, and fun place to work. The kingdom was showing up inside of a bank. What? Right? How many of you feel you have a call to ministry? Meaning that you are not just operating in those graces, but you have an equipping gift for the body of Christ in a full-time way. Raise your hand so I can see you guys out there, my fivefold gifted people. Okay? Great. Now, how many of you feel like you're called to both? Raise your hand if you're called to both. Okay. All right, well, we could do a week-long seminar on what kingdom fivefold ministry looks like because I can assure you it's not nonprofit and for-profit. Oh, that's a, that's a week-long thing to unpack for people because we have literally thought that church, is, church means nonprofit. It means 501c3. That if I'm going to be one of these guys, it's a 501c3. That is a completely made up thing that didn't even exist probably 200 years ago. This is a new thing. And it's totally BS. That stands for big story. Big story. Of course. What did you think it stood for? <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of people do you have in here? Oh, wait. Let me see them again. Let me see them again. Let me see them for who they are. Okay. Um, I'm messing with you. But it is malarkey. It's malarkey. Okay, that's a whole nother, a whole nother, th- a whole nother teaching. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I, I want to, to, to come back to this concept of honor here, guys, because it is really important that we see each other. Why? Because I don't, I don't get to receive the gift of who you are if I can't see you for who you are. And if I'm judging you after the flesh, first of all, we're going to have some strife. Oh, it's a work of the flesh. What are the works of the flesh? Who knows them? Well, we should talk about them. Because where those things exist, blind people live. Where there is strife, where there is envy where there is discord, where there is fits of rage, selfish ambition, bitterness, unforgiveness, where these things live, blind people live. You must go blind to operate in these things. You must be operating under the God of this world who has blinded the minds of those that believe not the gospel. By the way, he's not just talking about people that don't know Jesus yet. There are many sitting in the church 
blind, leading the blind. And Jesus said, beware, beware, beware of blind people. Beware of blind people. And here's the thing about blind people. They don't know they're blind. They don't know they're blind. They can't see the log in their own eye because they're too busy looking at the splinter in yours. It's one of the ways that you know that you're in the flesh is when you step out of love and you start focusing on what's wrong with people. Oh, and I mean any people, including yourself. The eyes of love do not see that way. They judge no one after the flesh. They see Jesus in a convict. They see Jesus in a pedophile. They see Jesus in every, the worst of the worst. They do not judge after the flesh. They speak things, non-existent things, as though they already existed. They call things that be not as though they are. Quit complaining about the government, people. Yeah. You're getting exactly what you're saying. Yes. That's how powerful you are. That is how powerful we are. So powerful. We are creative. And honor is the pipeline through which love flows. And we honor those not because they're worthy of it. Externally, we honor people because Jesus honored us. God so loved, so honored the world. He honored the world. You guys, there is no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. Does that make sense? And the more that we, it, here's the thing about honor. It's, it's, it's tempting to get offended when others don't honor you. When others don't see you. That's, it's tempting but the real problem is you haven't settled into who you are, regardless of who sees you. Because if you really knew who you are, were, you would be motivated by love and service to others, not by being seen. Let me read this. Matthew 20, verse 25 through 26, that Jesus says, He called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. So honor and service go together. Why? Because love and service go together. And if you want to lead, you must go low. You must go low. And you must get your esteem from who you are, from daddy's perspective. And it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process of healing. It's a process of being seen in a safe environment. It's a process of practicing honor and receiving honor. Does that make sense? So let me just read a few more things here. Matthew 10:41 says, "He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet 
receives a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So this principle of honor as a pipeline is that when we see someone, we get the reward of who they are. We get the gift of who they are. Does that make sense? And my work in Emerge is really all about this. It's really about uncovering and unveiling who people are in heaven. I make a joke. I work in the DMV of heaven. Sounds like a terrible job, but I love serving people that come into the DMV. And I'm way more efficient <laughs> than they are over in Lombard. <laughs> um, <laughs> but my joy and my delight is seeing people. This is who you are. And oh, wait, here's your ID. Now go be you. You have a license. You have permission. Go be you. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the culture that honor creates. And this process of moving to a five-fold model in church government is designed for that purpose. It is so that you can be unveiled. Does that make sense? And in the process, be seen for who you really are, but also see others for who they really are, judging no man or woman after the flesh and honoring one another based on who you are. You know, we really have created something powerful and beautiful in our Emerge community. In the sense that because we've unveiled people for who they are, we don't let them forget. Someone's having a hard day. Someone's going through something. We remind them. We remind them, oh, no, 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 no. You're a world changer. You're one with Jesus. You have a powerful call on your life. You are a gift. You're a gift to me. You're a gift to the world. And that, beloved, is the way church is supposed to be. Amen? And honor is the secret sauce. It's the secret sauce that promotes you, that draws people to you, that causes you to get an incredible reward. It compensates you. Honor will compensate you. You will get the reward of the gift of other human beings. And you will be rewarded by the Father because how you honor people honors Him. Does that make sense? And honor isn't something we just do when everybody's looking. Honor is a way of being. It shows up in, the, in our thought life. It shows up in our speech. <laughs> it shows up in every area of our life. It shows up in how we treat the, the rude person in the grocery store line. It shows up in how we act in a traffic jam, right? And it shows up also very powerfully in how we treat ourselves. And if you're going to go on this journey of honor that the Holy Spirit is leading us on here, then we must know that it, it, it starts with us. You know, I feel like most of us honoring God is like the easiest one to honor because we recognize who he is. <laughs> we can see God most of the time. We know to honor him. But, but remember, love the Lord your God heart with all your mind, all your strength and all your soul, right? Love him, love him, honor, honor, honor God, honor God. Just, you can start to read some scriptures and just, just substitute honor where you see love. 
Honor God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Honor him with the, the first fruit of your incomes. Honor, honor, honor. And then it says, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Honor your neighbor as you honor yourself. Yeah? Which neighbors? The nice neighbors? All of our neighbors. Guys, this is how the world will know Jesus. And we get the opportunity to practice. We get to practice honor in this community. We get to practice seeing one another. We get to practice loving one another. We get to practice being safe for one another, encouraging one another, thinking awesome thoughts about each other, speaking highly about each other, calling out the gold in each other, receiving the gift of each other, and serving one another in love. I'll tell you the greatest healing I've had in my life, and this has been a process. This has not been a one and done. Okay, the greatest healing I've had in my life has been for it to no longer be about Shalice. That may sound like a whole lot of stuff, because that is not just because I'm such a great person. That is a healing that God has done in my life. And I will tell you, by practicing this, we get healed. I have been healed by those who have honored me. I have been healed by those who have seen me when I didn't see myself. I have been healed through encounters with Jesus who, who kept reminding me who I was when I wasn't acting like it. Over and over and over and over and over again. Healed from adoption. Healed from all kinds of traumatic experiences because those things didn't define me. I defined you, says the Lord. And the, 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 the people in my life, the leaders in my life that would say, yes, I agree with that. I agree with who you are. I receive you. Yes, you're a blessing. I invite you to speak into my life. I invite you to serve me. Let, yes, you can serve me. And there is no greater joy on the planet than serving people with your gift. Amen. Showing up as who you are and serving other people out of a heart of love, out of a heart because they're hurting, out of a heart because they need Jesus, out of a heart because you see them, out of a heart because you are gifted. You are gifted. You are gifted. You are gifted. I am gifted. We are gifted. We are graced to set captives free, to hug people into wholeness, to take care of people's needs, to give when it hurts, when it's not convenient. And that is living. You guys, that is living. It is joy, unspeakable and full of glory to live from a place of honor. I don't know when I got to quit, but I think it's probably now. <laughs> um, I forgot to ask. Um, I'm very, very excited about the foundation that has been laid here by Joe and Nancy Barlow. Yeah. Um, you know, many of you know my own story. I mean, when, when God was healing my heart, he sent the Barlows. You know, I got adopted for a second time, really third time, because I was adopted for the but that was a different kind of adoption. But anyway, so I got, I got, I'm an honorary. Isn't that interesting? Honorary. I'm an honorary Barlow. We used to come when the kids were little. I mean, oh my goodness. Oli had no hair. She was so cute. <laughs> Remember when she didn't have a whole lot of hair when she was just a toddler? <laughs> and we would come and we just called it Camp Barlow. And we would just all pile in. We didn't even know where everybody was going to sleep, but we would just come and, and hang out. And that 
is just my own story. But there is an anointing on this family, a grace on this family for family, which is the kingdom. And apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, am I missing? Evangelists, pastors, prophets, teachers, apostles. I did all of order, right? <laughs> however you say them. Yeah. However, you know, however you order them is what I'm saying. It does matter how you order them. We'll talk about that another time, I'm sure. But they are here in this in this place already. God knows exactly who he put in, in, in the church today for this next season. To build upon the foundation that Joe and Nancy built for 16 years. And it is a solid foundation. Built on love, built on honor. Built on seeing people. In fact, Pastor Joe wouldn't even be able to hand over the reins if that wasn't true. But the fact that he is able to now move into a new position in this body and that Danny and Natalie are now here to really unleash a move of God through establishing a five-fold government in this body? Wow. 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 Because I will tell you guys, as you practice this and roll this out, supernatural signs and wonders are the grace that you get from all five working together. You create a supernatural culture when you have all five present and working in unity and in honor and in service of one another. I have experienced this firsthand. I have planted a couple of churches on this, on this uh, premise before. And I can tell you what we have seen, what I personally have seen through this model of church government released, we do not have time to share. We will. So buckle your seatbelts and really settle into this space of God placed me here. He planted me here for such a time as this. And that I am about to grow like never before. I am about to be transformed like never before. And I'm going to grow in my ability to receive love, to give love, to receive honor, to give honor, to be served and to serve. What a beautiful vision. What a beautiful, beautiful thing to be a part of. And I'm just super excited because apparently God thought I needed to be moved back here so that I could partake of it. Yay. So let me pray. Father, thank you for just this next season in Family Life Christian Center's legacy. Thank you, Father, that you have orchestrated every part of it because Jesus is building his church. I thank you for what's next for Joe and Nancy, and I thank you what is next for this body of believers. And I thank you that you are setting the body in position as it pleases you. Thank you that you are setting every member exactly where you would like them. And I thank you, Father, that no other plan except your plan is going to come to fruition. 
We just cancel the plans of man. We cancel the plans of the enemy and we decree and we declare that you are building, building, building without hindrance. You are growing, growing, growing without hindrance. You are maturing, maturing, maturing without hindrance. You are releasing, releasing heaven, releasing heaven, releasing heaven without hindrance. You are uh, just demonstrating the glory of Jesus with signs and wonders without hindrance. You are doing the same things that you've always done, (laughs) which is beyond our ability to imagine. (laughs) You're doing impossible things just for fun. And you're doing them through this body. So expand our minds, expand our hearts. Heal our hearts, God. Heal us more and more and more through the community here, through the relationships that you've established here. Thank you that this is a place of authenticity and transparency and um, safety, God. And we just are free to flourish, free to make mistakes, free to grow into the fullness of the stature of Jesus. Father, be with every single person as they take this test as they discover who they are. Father, just shine the light. I just say, let there be light over every single person. Let them see, Father. Let them see themselves. Let them see each other. Let them see uh, the truth that sets them free. And we just give you praise. We give you honor for it. And we call it all done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.